think the battle's won. Think again. The fact is, for each one we reach, there's one we can't. And if we can't reach them, chances are nobody can. Because a mind is a terrible thing to waste. It only takes one person, one event, one moment, or one thing to influence and inspire millions of people, irrespective of their race, creed, or sex, for decades. In this case, it only took one photograph. On a beautifully chaotic day in August 1958, a then unknown photographer, with the assistance of Esquire magazine, managed to assemble and capture 57 jazz musicians in one photo. That photo is known as A Great Day in Harlem. Let's get into it. In 1958, Esquire magazine authorized what we now know today as A Great Day in Harlem for their feature issue. They employed three men to help bring the historic photograph to life. Harold Hayes was the features editor for the magazine. Robert Benton was the graphics editor. And they also recruited the then unknown Art Kane, who served as the art director for Seventeen magazine during that time. Art Kane was a huge fan of jazz and it was his suggestion that led to the photo being taken in Harlem, the cradle of New York jazz. In the months leading up to the historic day, at the behest of Art Kane, Esquire magazine wrote and mailed letters to every jazz musician with a known address encouraging them to assemble at the Brownstone Apartment Building at 17 West 126th Street between Park and 5th Avenues at 10 a.m. Additionally, they also visited jazz clubs, musicians' bars, and even the Musicians' Union Local 802 on 52nd Street in Manhattan to recruit musicians for their photo. They even made phone calls the day before the shoot to encourage maximum attendance. They had no clue how many musicians would show up to the Brownstone apartment building at 10 a.m. on August 12, 1958. They didn't know if anyone would show up at all. However, at the proposed time, some 58 musicians began appearing at the Brownstone steps. Some traveled by subway, others by taxi, and a few even traveled on foot. According to an article written in the New York Newsday by Gene Seymour in 1995, what Marianne McPartland, one of the women featured in the photograph, remembers about that day was the easygoing camaraderie among the musicians that transcended race, generations, and even gender. A vivid description of the events of the day appeared in McGill's Survey of Cinema. It states, and I quote, that the photo came together at all is one of the miracles of the moment. It was Art Kane's first job as a professional photographer, and the assistant he chose was even more of a rookie, at one time loading the film backwards in Kane's camera. But before Art Kane could even take that historical photograph, he had to get the musician's attention. With all the mayhem that occurred when the musicians got together, the purpose of the gathering was becoming irrelevant to the meeting itself. Long after the photographer lost control of the group, ineffectually using a rolled-up newspaper for a megaphone to be heard over the din of the crowd, some of the musicians started to get tired of standing. Count Bassey, for one, took a seat on the curb to the delight of about 10 of the neighborhood boys who joined him there. Other children were beginning to hang out of adjacent windows to see what all the noise was about. Luckily for the photographer, Rex Stewart had brought his trumpet, and when he decided enough was enough, Stewart blew his horn. That did the trick. After 120 exposures, Art Kane finally got his famous picture of the jazz greats spilling down the steps and onto the sidewalk in front of an old brownstone between 5th and Madison Avenues in Harlem. The rest is history. End quote. The resulting photo was published in Esquire's magazine's January 1959 issue entitled the golden age of jazz. It caused a sensation and soon became a permanent part of jazz history. The photo showcased 57 musicians. Willie the Lion Smith had gotten too hot and ultimately bored and had wandered off somewhere. The other musicians that appeared in the photo were the following. Red Allen, Buster Bailey, Count Bassey, Emmett Berry, Art Blakely, Lawrence Brown, Scoville Brown, Buck Clayton, Bill Crump, 
Vic Dickinson, Roy Elridge, Art Farmer, Bud Freeman, Dizzy Gillespie, Tyree Glenn, Benny Golson, Sonny Greer, Johnny Griffin, Gigi Grease, Coleman Hawkins, J.C. Hurd, J.C. Higginbotham, Milt Hinton, Chubby Jackson, Hilton Jefferson, Ossie Johnson, Hank Jones, Joe Jones, Jimmy Jones, Taft Jordan, Max Kaminsky, Gene Krupa, Eddie Locke, Marianne McPartland, Charles Mingus, Miff Mole, Thelonious Monk, Jerry Mulligan, Oscar Pettiford, Rudy Powell, Lucky Roberts, Sonny Rollins, Jimmy Rushing, Pee Wee Russell, Sahib Shahab, Horace Silver, Zuddy Singleton, Stuff Smith, Rex Stewart, Maxine Sullivan, Joe Thomas, Wilbur Rare, Dickie Wells, George Wedling, Ernie Wilkins, Mary Lou Williams, and Lester Young. 62 years later, we can see that this monumental and historic photo has inspired countless other photos and films. In conclusion, Art Kane captured magic. He captured a legacy, and he captured a moment that will forever serve as a lasting inspirational artifact for millions of people for decades to come. The 57 men and women who were captured in this historic photo deserve to be celebrated. Thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I'll be back with another video very soon. Alright, peace family. <laughs>